Hey, what's up? This is Chris Cherini for Chris Core Productions, and today we're going to be creating a full 3D environment inside of After Effects. Now, before we start here, I just want to mention that I am not a professional matte painter by any means. I just uh, I'm showing you guys what I what I know, and hopefully that'll be helpful for your uh, next videos. All right, so let's get started. The first step is searching for your elements or your images. What I usually use is three main websites. One is Flickr because they have a cool feature that they have in their uh, advanced search tab. If I search anything such as New York, which relates to my uh, matte painting, I can go under the advanced search tab and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see these three very useful checkboxes regarding copyrights. And this is something to keep in mind, always use copyright free uh, material or, if possible, use your own. That's usually the, the best option. Our next website is cgtextures.com. This is a great, useful database of textures, free and royalty free, uh, that you can use for pretty much any project. Next is Google Images Advanced Search. And the reason why I use this is to reference uh, environments or reference what I'm trying to imitate in a 3D environment. And as you can see, you can have you have very cool features such as selecting the size of your uh, your 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 image or the predominant color in your image, region, type of picture, uh, and that is very useful for uh, narrowing down your, uh, your 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 search. So now we get into the real uh, boring part, unfortunately, about this uh, this map painting. And that is, once you have all your images, um, you're going to have to pretty much isolate them from their original environment by rotoscoping them. And then the fun part comes is, is placing them into your, uh, your 3D environment. And this can take quite a long time. And then once you have them in your 3D environment, you can you know choose to refine them a little bit. So over here, you can see me taking out part of those uh, those rocks over there. And then, like I said, it's all about placement. So right now, I'm just trying to uh, see where they look best, or you, you know what what you got to think ahead as well. Uh, you need to have a a plan of, of what your matte painting is going to look like in the end. And that's why most map painters actually create a, a sketch and then they build off of that sketch. Once you've found a good placement in your environment, it's time to uh, match it as best as possible to the rest of your 3D elements. I'm just using a uh, simple moss texture to give it that jungly feel. Moving on, let's destroy taxi. Now, what I have here is a image separated already from its background, just by a simple uh, mask. I'm adding more masks inside the window so that we can have uh, see-through uh, and we can actually see our uh, matte painting as, as the background in the windows. Just simply subtract uh, the masks and uh, what I'm going to do here is just uh, go back and add more points to my mask uh, just to uh, refine it a little bit, add some uh, more detail, especially in those uh, tricky rounded um, parts of, of the image, same thing with the front wheel. And then all we do now is just uh, pretty much add elements that can put some stress or some erosion into the, uh, into the glass, into the body paint of the car. And all I'm doing here is using, is using textures and elements. These elements uh, specifically are from Action Essentials 2 from Video Copilot. Uh, I, I always mention them. There are great uh, great company and it's a very useful asset to have especially in After Effects. Now what I have here is a texture of a concrete wall with uh, concrete or paint peeling off but if you uh, if you set it as hard light or overlay depending on how strong your uh, the contrast on your texture is you can see that it acts as rust or the actual uh, paint peeling off of the of the taxi. Also what I did here is I dropped a effect called corner pin and that is used to uh, match the perspective of your, of your cab. Now this affects your mask a little bit but if you play around with it um, it is a little bit annoying but you can get it right. So now I want to duplicate this element so I'm just going to move it a little bit to the front, reshape the second duplicate 
and now we've extended that rust so that it covers the uh, back part of the car. I'm gonna add some plants just to uh, give that feel that nature is, is pretty much overcame everything uh, man-made. And again, it is all about playing around and, and, and finding that, that placement that looks right to you. Just gonna keep dropping plants. And what I'm going for right now is uh, having uh, plants almost like explode out of the windows. Like they're, they're growing inside and reaching outside of, of the taxi cab. I'm playing with uh, three images of, of plants and I am just duplicating those those same three images over and over but by rotating them, scaling them, uh, placing them in different positions and in different ways they all look like different different types of plants and actually different images of that type of plant. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a slight tint to darken the, the plant in the back. Uh, I'm doing that just to add a little bit of depth and separation. Uh, also um, the taxi and other plants could be casting a little bit of a shadow to the to, the, to whatever's behind it. Over here, I added a black solid, and I am creating a mask to uh, resemble a, a crack or, uh, in the tail light. So, if I turn that layer back on, you can see that it's just a simple uh, black solid. But if you drop the transparency a little bit, it really adds that effect of a broken tail light. And again, it's it's little detail like this that that helps uh, sell your your map painting as, as being realistic. Then I am just dropping that uh, moss texture that we've uh, previously seen. Again, I'm just doing this to uh, match it uh, and match the look with uh, with the rest of the elements that I have in my uh, environment. starting to look good. Again, this is all subjective. Uh, what I am doing with with this taxi is, is probably completely different from what you would be doing. or uh, it, It's just a matter of what you personally like and what, what looks good to, uh, to you. Again, we go back to that whole uh, placement idea. I'm just pretty much just dragging this, uh, this pre-composed layer of what we just created and uh, I am just looking for uh, a position where it would pretty much look cool. There's no, uh, yeah, there's no science behind it, it's just where it looks cool. I am repeating those same steps for this other picture that I found of a uh, wrecked uh, New York taxi. Just pretty much going to add some textures and add some plants, uh, match them as best as possible, always keep that in mind and then you just place them in your uh, 3D environment. This concludes the first part of a three-part tutorial. I really hope this helped you guys and I really look forward to seeing you in part two and part three. Once again, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in part two and part three.